Hi, Gary O'Hanlon here. Just finished with Kira on Lunchtime Live, and uh, I'm going to be answering your questions for the next 10 or so minutes. All right. Okay, so the first one comes in from Sean. So I'm trying to make my own prawns pill pill at home, but I never seem to get the same effect as I do in the restaurants. Do you have any tips? Oh, any tips? Key thing when it comes to prawns, I suppose, is uh, use Irish, use Dublin Bay prawns, use langoustines. A lot of the time in restaurants, that's what they're using. Well, good restaurants are using that. Some of the other ones could be using any type of a thing, you know. Again, really, really hot pans. The thing with prawns really is get the spice right. Um, have all your ingredients ready to hand because the thing about prawns is you're talking about 10 to 15 seconds to have something ready start to finish and uh, don't be overcooking it but once you, once you go into the, the regions of overcooking everything's starting to get rubbery it's starting to go off so really in restaurants if you're finding it and that's something that you're eating a lot of the time when it comes to seafood time it is everything it comes to all food time it is everything but definitely when it comes to seafood and something as small as the prawn really really rapid cook and have all the little bits and pieces from lime spices butter and your oil maybe coriander whatever it is you're using be well prepared get into it because literally start to finish you're looking at 20 30 seconds once you get going uh, so Mary wants to know, do you have any tips on how to make a tasty stir fry? Whenever I make one at home, I find I don't have enough sauce. Don't have enough sauce. Look, stir fries, again, it all depends what you're using. If you're going to be using stir fries, you've got to use a good quality meat, okay? So if it's chicken, that's fine, or pork, that's fine. If it goes into beef then or lamb, you've got to use a first-class cut. And by first-class cut, when it comes to beef, I mean fillet, ribeye, or sirloin. Outside of that then, you'd need to have slow cook the meat already and then have it maybe sliced up and diced and you're almost refrying it type thing so first off use a tender cut or tender joint again have everything ready ahead of time as far as sauce is concerned when it comes to stir fries what, what i love you know if you're doing it like a vaita type stir fry and you've got a little sort of chili salsa that's made separately what i tend to do anytime i'm doing stir fries is i love to add in cooked rice and make it look almost an egg fried rice and I would use different type, obviously onions, celery, chilies, peppers, and uh, sliced beef, for example, or sliced pork is lovely. And then you're sweating it up. Again, have a little bit of a sauce separate. Like tinned tomatoes are really, really good as far as feeding into it if you if you want it to be saucy. I tend to though just cook it all off, add in a little bit of Frank's hot sauce, add in a little bit of sh shirazza, um seasonings. Then I add in my cooked rice near the end, some fresh coriander, and then I drop in one or two eggs. And the eggs will do two things. I'm just going to bring flavor. It's going to bulk it out a wee bit. But it's also like the yolk. It almost makes it that wee bit softer and a little bit more moist. And uh, and that's what I tend to use, you know. I don't, I'm not mad for stir fry, fries and then a big gloopy sauce. So like dropping in a few eggs and some rice is beautiful. Okay, so this comes from David. So do you have any tips on how to cook a medium rare steak properly? Every time I try to do it, I end up cooking it tartar or way overdoing it. <laughs> well, I don't know if you're cooking it tartar. Medium rare steak, the key thing, look, is always buy, buy good, good meat. You know, like I just wrapped up a pop-up restaurant for Lidl last week. I had a Cote de Buff on there, which is an incredible joint. It's a double bone in um ribeye steak and, and you'll you'll find them in any of the Lidl stores. And um Season it really, really well. So if you like medium rare, the key thing that you got to look for is is a bit of depth and a bit of bulk in the steak. So if you're buying steaks, and and a lot of the shops you'll find the the pack pre packaged steaks can be thin. So that's why I recommend you go for that kilo rib on the bone, um, coat de boeuf. Basically, season it really, really well. Really, really hot pan, and you want to just get absolute smoking hot pan and then you've got a, the steak itself brushed with a little bit of oil and get it on get it cooking the minute you add a steak to the pan do not touch it let the smoke go here go there have a door open have a window open whatever it may be but do not touch it give it a few minutes then just peek into it i mean i'm doing it a long time so i know exactly nearly how long to give it then i turn it over put it back in the pan don't touch it don't move it don't shake it don't do anything then you let it cook out and again it's always to the touch okay so when it comes to medium rare look i could give you timings here but really everything is based on the depth of the steak that you're cooking you know the, the deeper the steak the thicker the steak the longer you give it but the more firm that the meat gets 
the the more cooked it's becoming. So if you ever touch it when it's absolutely raw, your finger can almost squish into it. When you sear it, it goes rare. You'll feel it that it's getting slightly, slightly heavier. So the key thing is when you cook it, when you get it right, touch it and touch it and touch it and get a feel. Because regardless of the size, the touch, chefs will always know regardless of the size of the steak once they're touching it, what temperature it's at inside. And it's something that just takes a lot of years of practice to get right. But keep at it and keep eating good Irish meat. Okay, so Killian wants to know, do you have any tips for a student eating well on a minimum budget? Yeah, eating well on a mim- minimum budget. This is something actually, Camilla O'Connor was a girl, um, a really smart girl too. Like she would have worked with me for years in few minutes. She used to always tell me to uh, a lot of the different stores at certain times of the day would reduce a lot of food. So the first thing you got to do is go to the local supermarkets that, that are close to you or the local shops that are close to you. There'll always be certain times of the day where, where the reductions go on. So first thing I would recommend is you shop savvy. Second of all then is shop, the, go on YouTube, go online and look at a couple of little like for chicken thighs or for shoulders or for cheap cuts of meat anything that you can slow cook slow cookers are your friend as well because you can slow cook joints like if you get a little housekeeper cut for example and 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 Lidl and you slow cooked it it's about you know a pound and a bit weight you'd get three four five six dinners out of that there you could when you cook it out you could get a roast dinner out of it then the leftovers you could get a pasta ragu out of it you would get a stir fry out of it and literally that's one little piece of meat that if you jump online jimmy oliver's site's really really good i find for some recipes if you just put in the search bar because people from all over the world are contributing to, to that site and it's really really good i, I gotta say and the recipes work which is really important. You can go on different sites here and there. So the key thing, find out when ingredients go down. Like and 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 look around. Like look around the shops. You'll see those little re- reduced. Fight. Don't be afraid. I always say to people, do not be afraid or above your station when it comes to little reduced stickers. Because a lot of the time, it's what's called in the restaurant the seconds stuff that may not be perfect for the retail shelf if you're just making a soup or making a stir fry and manipulating ingredients buy it at half price and you're and you're bulking out and making some great stuff you know so that's your starting point okay so this comes in from shauna she she wants to know do you have any tips for sprucing up a roast she's just finding them a bit bland lately all right so to spruce up a roast Sprucing up a roast, you can go a couple of different ways, and and, and probably the best way of doing it is because you can't really do tons of the meat, bar maybe changing the marinade, bar maybe changing the, uh, you know, what cut you're doing, whether it be a rack of pork, something like a rack of pork that not too many people, they're usually brazen shoulders or roasting beef joints or roasting whole chickens, Um, but play around with the sides. If you were to get... um, like a roast leg of lamb, for example, and then do a boulangere potato, which is like sliced potatoes, loads of sliced onions, nice little chicken stock, and you're so slow braising that. Look up a recipe online anywhere for a boulangere potato. Absolutely incredible accompaniment. You've got lamb, spring lamb coming into season now soon. And um, you could do a candied spice turnip where you get a head of turnip. Say you've got a full, get a small head of turnip, but do like eight adults or ten adults. Peel it whole, dice it up into big cubes. Half a pound of butter sliced over it, four or five tablespoons of honey drizzled over it into an oven at about 180, and you roast that. You've got candied sweet, boulangere potatoes, and then put your carrots in there too with a little bit of spice, a little bit of butter, a little bit of rapeseed oil, a little bit of like spicy seasoning, whether it be like a chan chan spice, like a spice bag seasoning. You'll see them in different stores, they're amazing over carrots. And and roast your veg and do different little things and play around with the accompaniments, you know. And again, maybe pick something that's a bit a bit different to the traditional one. And I'd highly recommend a bone in French trimmed rack of pork. If you were to go to your butcher and ask for that, it's an absolute cracker. Serve that then with maybe a barbecue molasses sauce some wilted spinach and maybe a maple bourbon sweet potato puree. Absolutely. If I might do that recipe next week, actually, because that's on late on lunchtime live here with Kira, because I, I do that dish. I've done that before, and I might mention that next week on the show. It's a cracker. Okay, so the last question comes in from Marianne. It's another prawn question. So I bought a giant bag of frozen prawns that have been in my freezer for a few weeks, and I really need to use them up. Do you have any suggestions for an easy prawn dish? Yeah, so look, the easiest prawn dish that's out there, and it's it's an absolute crowd pleaser, is the prawn cocktail, okay? So what I'd suggest is take your prawns out, put them in a big bowl of cold water, I'm presuming they're already 
um, they're already you know shelled or whatever and deveined. If they're not, you need to shell them and devein them. Once once they're defrosted, then if they're raw, you need to drop them into boiling salted water with a little bit of lemon in it for about 20, 25 seconds to cook them. If they're already cooked, once you defrost them and, and drain off the excess water, you're ready to rock and roll. Get ahead of classical iceberg lettuce, cut it into big chunks. I like the iceberg in big chunks because it grabs the sauce. And then what you're going to do is get a bowl or get a glass, a cocktail glass. Start with a big handful of, of your iceberg lettuce. You add in your prawns and then you make a little. Um, so basically you're looking at two tablespoons of, for per person, you're looking at two tablespoons of mayonnaise, one tablespoon of ketchup, one teaspoon of Worcester sauce and about a half a teaspoon of Tabasco and a little hit of lemon juice. Mix that up. If, and and basically, if it's very very sharp, add add a little bit more ketchup or whatever. Or you can play around then with the flavorings, but you're making basically a classical Mary Rose sauce. Spoon that then over the prawns. Serve it with a big lemon wedge, and you couldn't get a nicer or easier dish to do. It's it's a, it's a it's a banger. And now that we're in the summer, perfect time of year for it.